So eventually the 6.2 is just not enough power. And then you buy one of these things to upgrade. Let's see what we got here. Picked this up a few days ago. For a buddy of mine, a couple of towns over, he's got a uh, an 86 Humvee with the 6.2 uh, three-speed transmission. Uh, the TA400, I believe. I always call it the 3L80. Uh, it's not not the proper term though. So he picked up one of these. 6.5 turbo with the 4L80. Pretty cool. Except they just ripped these things out. <laughs> you can see here, uh, obviously cut the exhaust. Harness ain't looking too good. Same for the transmission harness. Um, everything's bent. You know, this stuff. This stuff doesn't really matter. The way they see it is all this stuff is extra anyway. Um, but he did pay, I think he paid almost 3000 for this assembly. Um, if you look down here, still got to get this saran wrap off. They just cut it right out of the frame. And this is how they do it when you buy these. This is how all of them come. Some are in better shape than the others, but for the most part, this is what you're getting. If you're going to buy a 6.5 turbo with a 4L80E out of a uh, military truck, they call them a, a military takeout, this is what you're getting. Um, so today you'll notice... The intake manifolds are off. Fold those off quick when I got it because a common thing with these is you get them with water in the intake. And we do indeed have water in the intake. Turbo's toast. Um, they just let these things sit outside. It's a, it's a real shame actually because um, although they tear these things out, the the engines in the transmissions usually in, are in pretty good shape when they pull them out. Um, these are taken out of trucks that are um, totaled uh, body-wise um, or other reasons. Um, usually a transmission, a bad engine or a bad transmission is not going to cause these things to go to the junkyard. So it's usually um, just a Humvee that's been totaled with frame damage or something like that. So usually these things are in great shape and then they just let them sit outside. And they usually come with water damage. You can see that. So anyway... Right now, I'm going to start tearing this apart. That's the goal now, just to see where we're at. Uh, transmission fluid, too. This was left off. Um, doesn't look too bad, but I'm smelling it here. Uh, it, it's quite burnt, but usually these things, uh, these transmissions, even if you got burnt fluid, uh, uh, transmission service will usually do the trick, and uh, it'll be good. And uh, so this is what we're dealing with. So got the intake off. I'm going to finish taking the turbo off, um, get the intake, uh, get the intake off and, oh geez, I'm just looking at other stuff I didn't notice until now. Um, not that it matters, that doesn't matter right now. Yeah, get the intake off, get the turbo off and I'll get one of these heads off um, after I remove, geez, the whole serpentine system and the alternator and all that. And then, uh, and then see what we're looking at for damage inside the head and hopefully uh, none or, or very little inside the... Uh, inside the cylinders there so let's do that All right, so spent about 20 minutes or so getting all this off, getting to this point. Um, so now all I have to do to remove the heads is pull the, uh, I'm gonna pull the injection lines from the injectors. I'm gonna leave the exhaust manifold, the injectors in, glow poison, everything like that for now. Uh, I'm gonna do that on both sides, lift the injection pump out like a spider. Um, and this'll, this'll be real easy. I gotta, uh, in order to remove the injection pump, I have to pull the front cover here. Um, not the front cover, just this uh, front oil fill. And there's a bolt in there that'll line up. You gotta rotate it, line it up uh, by turning the crank. Um, so I'll do that, remove the injection pump, and then work on removing the heads, or All just right, about so there. So we got the head off, obviously, on this side. Um, and it's not looking too good. It looks like 
um, inside the head, there was water um, or visible water damage inside the um, intake ports on the head on these two. Um, and then these two looked all right. And that's pro probably because these two valves, intake valves were closed. So it just sat in the head, hence the orange inside the head there. Um, and then this one inside the head looked okay because the valve was open. And we got a bunch of this going on. <sighs> so I am gonna, I mean, that's ugly. Uh, I'm gonna oil that up. And right now the motor does not turn over. So the goal is to oil that up, uh, try to clean it up, um, let oil sit in there for a few days maybe, and then try to turn her over. Um, so I'll be back with that. Oh, here's the head too. So uh, the exhaust still attached. I kind of got a mess going on here. Here's all the parts. Um, doesn't look organized, but it's all organized. All the bolts are still together. I recommend doing that. Anytime you can, keep all the bolts together. Every bolt has a spot. Put it back. I don't know, the only loose ones I got over there are from the fan. Um, so, yeah. So, this is uh, it's not too good here. I'll clean that up. Um, inside the intake ports, you can actually see. This will be the best view that you get. Um, you can see, like, the rust here. Imagine that going all the way in. And then on this one, which is the rusty cylinder there, the third, clean and clean. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to do what we can to clean this up. Um, go ahead and start cleaning up that cylinder there. Try to turn it over. Check the other side. See looks if it's okay. the same. It looks okay. Not much in the cylinders there. So for the most part, we got one cylinder to worry about. I'm gonna clean these up from the top as best I can with some brake cleaner. Put some Marvel Mystery Oil in each cylinder. Cover this back up. Let it sit for a couple days. Um, come back out, try to spin that crank. Um, if that doesn't work, the oil pan is a little crushed. I mean, they really don't care about these things. Um, so what I'll try to do is, or what I will do, is I'll lift the engine up, pull the oil pan off, um, and then try to spin it to see if maybe um, that crushed oil pan is causing stuff to bind down there. Uh, unlikely, I feel like, since it's, it's only crushed about two inches, two or three inches, which is usually the oil catch itself is probably six inches. So, but anyway, so that's it. So that's what we got. Uh, clean it up. Clean all this stuff up. And uh, we'll be back again. And hopefully this thing's running because um, this guy sp spent a lot of money on this. Um, and although it probably was a deal, I know he wants this thing running. Um, and we bought it for a purpose. So, or he bought it for a purpose. So we'll get this thing cleaned up, oiled up, and then hopefully it spins. I thought I was going to end this. Um, and then I went ahead and started doing this stuff now, pulling the pan like I said I was going to do. Um, it was crushed. You can see a little bit there on the bottom because they just slammed this thing. Um, it didn't have much effect. It pushed the oil sump up a little bit. It was maybe hitting that that uh, rod cap for cylinder seven or whatever. Um, but even still, like this thing moves up and down so easy anyway. Like That wouldn't have stopped the motor from rotating. So I took the pan off. Tried to turn it again with the pan off. Um, obviously didn't make a difference. So the only problem cylinder, like I was saying, was this number three cylinder. Um, the second one in from the front on the driver's side. Um, it had all that rust in it. All the other ones looked pretty good. Luckily the intake valves were closed. Same on the other side. They looked really good. Um, there is oil in there now, so that's what you're seeing. Um, head gasket looked good. The crank looked just fine. Um, I mean, it looks almost brand new. This thing probably had like 3,000 miles on it. The head gaskets look like they were put in yesterday. Um, so anyway, still had no luck. I suspected that cylinder was the, was the problem cylinder. So luckily, cap, the rod cap bolts lined up. I'm going to try to, so they lined up perfect at an angle where I could get them here and up here. That one, that one, the nuts were on there at an angle where I could get them. So I pulled the cap off 
um, to disconnect the cylinder from the crank, suspecting that was the one holding the crank. Um, and sure enough, it spun, uh, spins free. So that's my one problem cylinder. Um, so at least I know that now. I know what my issue is. So um, I can focus on that. I'm gonna leave the oil sitting in here now. I'm not gonna turn it just because I got the oil in here. I don't wanna push it out. Um, so I'll give that a day or two and I'll come out and I'll try to push that cylinder down um, because I mean, the cylinder walls up here are disgusting. My goal is to push that cylinder down, get some emery cloth, clean it up, um, oil it up again, and then move it back and forth. And then hopefully that does the trick. So um, the rumors were true. We got this 6.5 turbo military takeout, uh, water in the intake, motor wouldn't turn, um, but we're getting there. Um, so this was part one, I suppose. Next step is to get that cylinder free, get the heads cleaned up and and resurfaced and thrown back on. And uh, and then we'll be one step closer to throwing it into a Humvee, not this Humvee. This is a H1 civilian Humvee. Um, it'll be going into an M998, uh, I believe, an 86. So uh, that's the come.